out to visit an antiques dealer who's just set up a shop in a new location. We're off to meet a guy called Brian today at Old Mill Antiques in Wilston. Uh, not Wilston, London. Wilston. Right. Uh, not Wilston Green. Wilston, yeah. And um, he's taken on a new building and he's got two or three more dealers in there with him. So it's an older dealer with a new location. That's never going to get old, is it? No, because he's, he's going to go through his stuff and found things at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything there should be solid winners all the way along. Set in a valley in West Yorkshire, the village of Wilsdon dates back to Saxon times. By the 19th century, it boasted several cotton mills, one of which has been converted into an antique centre by a group of four dealers. It's only been open a month, and the boys are being shown around by veteran dealer and restorer Brian O'Connell. It's a large place, and we have a real eclectic mix of things. Uh, I tend to specialise in, in Georgian furniture and early furniture. You can tell what sort of nails or screws or joints or timbers should be used because I restore as well as, as buy. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Drew and T coming today. I love some of the stuff that Drew buys. Yeah, he, he likes quality items, so hopefully he'll have a good time today, and, and so will I. Hello. Hello. Hi, Drew. T. Ryan, Good how you to see you. Ryan, right. Nice to meet you. Right. Nice to meet you. Yeah, welcome to the old mill, Auntie. Let's come inside. Have yes, a look. please. Yeah, okay. After you. Thank you. Thank you very All much. Right. <laughs> oh, Ducky. It's massive. Wow. Well, all around. Yeah. Very smart. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Jeeps. <laughs> First impressions are good. As a dealer, you walk in and you clock everything straight away. Well laid out, clean, and everything's got a price on it. So how, how long have you been doing this, then? Because, I mean, there's some experience behind this. Uh, over 40 years. Thought yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that? Stained glass, thought to be by Edward Byrne-Jones. It came from a collector uh, of, of arts and crafts stuff who unfortunately died yeah. without any information about it. OK. Similar to be found in the Epiphany Chapel, Winchester. P.O.A. Yeah, Epiphany. <laughs> yeah, yeah do, we have to, do I have to have an epiphany to work out how much it is? <laughs> well, yeah, I sent photographs off to the Morris Society yes. and they thought it might be by him. Okay. But, yeah, nobody's actually seen it in the flesh. As soon as I walk through the door, I clock something. And it's a piece of stained glass. It's in the manner of Morris and it's got a couple of cues on there that might be Morris. The real big one for me that says, yes, it's close enough to take a punt on it is a running across the top, there's a, a band with circles in it, just with little circles. That is Morris to a T. William Morris set up his company in 1861, and from the 1870s, his longtime friend and the artist Edward Byrne Jones was Morris's main designer of stained glass, for which the company became particularly renowned. Influenced by medieval art, the designs were often collaborations with the craftsmen who made them. Though lacking in providence, this piece could be a late example by Morris's company. If verified, it may be worth around £6,000. What do you value it at? Well, my problem is I, I, I just like it, so... Um, I mean, we're talking a few thousand pounds. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do remember, this is my specialised subject. I know, I know, yes, yes, yes. So... Yeah. Um, Seven. Seven. Seven's too much. Drew and T are visiting a new antique centre in West Yorkshire, run by Brian O'Connell. Welcome to all my antiques. Wow. Very smart. Thank you. Within minutes, Drew spotted a large piece of stained glass that may just be by one of his greatest design heroes, William Morris. Do remember, this is my specialised subject. I know, I know, yes, yes, yes. So, um... Seven. Seven. Seven's too much. Seven's too much. Right. Without a firm attribution. Right. At the minute, it's in the manner of, which makes it worth about 1,200 quid. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Well, have you got a piece of paper saying William Morris did that? <laughs> no, no. No. But Do you want to no, go no, and write one? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you sort that out? <laughs> that, that's, that's the reality of what we're dealing with. It's late if it is. So it's Morris and Co. Yeah. Which is, means after his death. Mm -hmm. Which means less value and less desirability. Yeah, I mean, my problem is it's, it's, it's not a piece I bought to sell. POA means you do want to sell it. I know, I know. It being in the shop means you do want to sell it. Yeah. Um, well, where are you up with it? Two and a half. Mm, no. Um, no, it'd have to be near a five for me to, to part with it, I'm afraid. Right, right. Let's carry on looking around. Yep, OK. See if we can have a deal, maybe, right. on something else. So, 40 years. Oh. Even with my training, right, I've only been doing it for 36. Oh. Even with... even. Well, I, I started as a harpsichord maker. <laughs> 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 Strangely enough. Really? Early musical <laughs> instruments, yeah. And uh, the guy that I worked for <laughs> collected antiques, so I started restoring for him. Yeah. And at the age of 17. So that's quite specialised harpsichords. It is. It was a lovely job. Is there a lot of call for harpsichords? Yeah. Well, do you remember <laughs> Golden Brown Stranglers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hugh yeah. Cornwall. Did, did that one that's on the video. Did you? Yeah. Came on, watched it on top of the pots, like, ah! <laughs> <That's> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Interesting. So we're now moving on to, uh, well, actually, that's mine. I love the faces in this. Everyone's got a tiny oh, face. Yeah. What a thing. This is a very unusual piece of furniture. It's got something I've never seen. On the fronts, it's got little faces scratched into the surface. Were they there from new? I don't think so. Are they a great addition to it? Yes. You know, they're a bit of fun. They're a bit, that's just something that mark something out as different, but it's had a very hard life. There's a myriad of problems all over it. How much are you asking for that? Um, 850. Financially, it's not worth me getting into it. It's a fantastic piece of furniture, but it, the figures just aren't going to add up. So I do like as well, you paint that behind there. Yeah. <laughs> it is mine. Um... You bring it down? Yeah. The most... The most Lovely picture. It's just a great picture. And it's a poster. It's an American sort of art festival or something poster, clearly by the extremely famous painter Edward Hopper. It's great. It's just a nice thing. It doesn't have to be worth a fortune to be something I want to buy. It's nice, that. How much is it? It's just a poster. It's been... They've locked the... Sat the framer. Yeah. 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 You're liking all the things that I want to keep myself. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> Similar to oh, you've been, you've the trouble. <laughs> Couple of hundred. 120, I think, is probably favourite for me, where I want to be. Do 150? 140. Yeah, OK, then. Sold. Yeah, Thank you. The light on that picture is wonderful, but also the fact that it was, you know, American art gallery, that type of thing. It's just got something... That's certain something that changes the look of a room. OK, right, so, we'll find yourself back by the glass. What are your thoughts? I think we need to... We're going to meet somewhere. I think we can have a deal. Right. But both of us have got to experience a bit of pain. Yes, I know. It's how much pain I can experience. How much pain can you can take, take? And how much pain am I willing to give? <laughs> OK. And what did I say? Two and a half? I can't go alone for. I bet you can. Oh. It needs to start with a three. Yeah. Well, it's, got, it's got to be three, seven, five. Three seven. Three seven. Sold. Right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. My gut says I am seventy percent there that it's right. Now, if I am right, if I am right, I've just done very well. And if not, I've just made a big, very expensive mistake. And one thing that's going to help is if you had a list of every time they use that pattern in a church, in an ecclesiastical building, because that's where that's come from. Luckily, there is one, right? I will have to go through every time that type has been used, 
see if the measurements are on there, see if the church still exists, and then I can, you start picking away at it. But right now, it's just down to work. It's hours and hours and hours of trawling to find where that came from. You need to find where it came from. But there's enough clues in it. A mate of mine, he said to me, a good deal is where you feel a bit of pain and you feel a bit of pain. So you've pain. taken a bit of a hit <laughs> and I've paid a bit more. Yeah. Yeah? No, I'm happy with that. That's fine, yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. I'll miss it, but yeah. yeah. Not that much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you can get the other half out now, put it in the window. <laughs> yes, that's true. Really you haven't got any more of it, have you? Yes, yeah. You haven't no, got any more. No, no. That would have been one of a piece. There would have been I about know. five or six more of those all stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Thank yep. you. Our visit today to Old Mill Antiques. Well, you don't get many of them to the pound, do you? There's some great things here. There's a couple of pieces of furniture I was seriously interested in, but my mind was completely taken away by the glass. We've bought something potentially extraordinary. If it turns out to be right, I'll be over the moon. That chance to buy something that potentially came out of the mind of one of the masters. And that knowledge of, of just that, that sense that there's still stuff out there. There's still little hidden gems waiting to be found. Brian, thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. It's been a pleasure, it. Trevor. Thank right. you. Brian, dealer of four decades, knowledgeable restorer, likes good things, brave, buys well, lots of stock. That's a good contact. He is a good contact. Take care, buddy. See you later. Take care. See you. Bye -bye. Well, that was good, if not slightly expensive. If it is right, I really don't want to sell. He didn't want to sell it. I don't want to sell it, because it's genuinely beautiful. It's going to go straight to your house on the way back. It's going to go straight to my house, right? The main thing is I need to sit and, and really do my homework on it. But it's a lot of money to hoik out there without a concrete attribution. Can I be honest with you? We're, I said 70-30. I think it's 50-50 now. Right. I really do. But I'll take that chance. Because if it's right, the rewards are great in a number of ways. And if I'm wrong... No, carry on Friday. No, or the Friday after. Anyway, there you go. A good day. With a fresh collection of items he thinks might have been made by his design heroes, Drew could not be more delighted. This week has been really rather incredible. I got to rub shoulders for a brief second with three of my heroes. I got to, I think, buy a piece of stained glass by William Morris. I'm still 50-50 on that. I got to buy a pair of coat hooks, which again, might be, but we're not entirely sure, from the Palace of Westminster and designed by Pugin. And I got to buy things from Merchant Taylors Hall in the shadow of Stone's work. It is the best job in the world for a uh, a very uneducated lad from North Wales to be wandering around in those buildings and trying in some small way to understand little bits of them is...
subject. I know, I know, yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. um, seven. Seven. Seven's too much. Drew and T are visiting a new antique centre in West Yorkshire, run by Brian O'Connell. Welcome to all my antiques. Wow. Very smart. Thank you. Within minutes, Drew spotted a large piece of stained glass that may just be by one of his greatest design heroes, William Morris. Do remember, this is my specialised subject. I know, I know, yes, yes, yes. So, um... Seven. Seven. Seven's too much. Seven's too much. Right. Without a firm attribution. Right. At the minute, it's in the manner of, which makes it worth about 1,200 quid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, have you got a piece of paper saying William Morris did that? <laughs> no, no. No. But, Do you want no, to go no, and write one? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you sort that out? <laughs> that, that's, that's the reality of what we're dealing with. It's late if it is. So it's Morris and Co. Yeah. Which is, means after his death, mm -hmm. which means less value and less desirability. Yeah, I mean, my problem is it's, it's, it's not a piece I bought to sell. POA means you do want to sell. I know, I know. It being in the shop.